What's up? I'm Mike Janella. Here with me today, the co-host of MSNBC's Morning Joe and the host of NBC's Sunday Today with Willie Geist. The name's right there in the title, Willie Geist. Yeah, we like to put it in there so you can't forget. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, it does exactly what it says on Great the label. Great to see you. Fellow Likewise. Jersey guy. Fellow Jersey Love person, yeah. yeah. I was I was an intern for NBC at the Olympics you like were. 15 years ago. Really? So we got that in touch. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we got Paris coming up. You don't want to intern Excited. there next yeah. summer. Oh. That's the one in, to go put to. Put a word in yeah. for me. Uh, we'll talk about all that in a second, but you're here with us here today. Yes. You're an on-the-record Yankees fan. We won't hold it against you, yeah. but it's always good Don't to hide have you that. hanging yeah. out here. Knicks and Giants, though, right? So, Knicks and Giants, yeah. Two and out of three and I will bad. say, I grew up in, in New Jersey in the 80s, and people forget this because of all the Yankees lore and yeah. the dynasty, but when I was growing up, the 80s and early 90s, they were not Tough good. Years. They were in last place in 1990, which they are again right now. Um, so the, but the Mets were the thing. And it was hard not to be excited about what was happening in Queens, you know, 84, 85, of course, 86, yeah. and beyond. And I was a first baseman, so I loved Donnie Baseball, of course, Don Mattingly, but I also loved Keith Hernandez. It was a great 10 years for first baseman. It was, year. and I wanted to play like Keith Hernandez. I straddled first base when I held a runner on the way he did. I'd charge up in front of the pitcher and Gross during the bunt. That I couldn't no, okay. do because I was in fourth grade. <laughs> that right. was hard. But I loved Keith Hernandez, and it was hard not to, even as a Yankee fan, not to love that era of Mets baseball. All right. Well, we, we love when Yankee fans have that false humility about all the hard <laughs> days, but we're glad that you respect and appreciate what happens yeah. here across town. That's what I think a lot of people maybe don't know about you, because they probably see you, they recognize you talking about you know hard news, global affairs, politics, but you are a huge sports person. Yeah. Played it growing up. What's your appetite now? How much do you get to watch, do you get to follow outside of your day job? You know, you would think it would be small. It's actually huge okay. because I am so immersed in the news and the rest of my life is all about what's happening, which at times can be depressing. Sure. And so when I get home at night, I don't want to put on the news again. I've lived it all yeah. day. And so I put on the Yankees or I put on the Mets or I put on a college football game, whatever it is, because not only do I love it, but it's a total escape and a departure from everything else that's happening in the world and happening in my life professionally. So my kids and I will just sit and watch a game. It's the best way to get out of it. I got a, escape was the word I, I was kind of feeling as you were describing that, because when you come to a ball game, and this has to feel like a whole different world for you in a good way. It is, it is. And also, you know, you watch a lot of games. There's just no substitute for getting out a couple yeah. times a year, sitting in these seats. We just went out and looked at the green grass. And even like, you know, I'm almost 50 years old. The first time you walk through the tunnel and you see the still field, it's you every still, time. you feel yeah. like a little kid. It gets me every time. So I love coming. Only a couple games a year usually, scheduling-wise, but man, it's always special. So what does your schedule look like on a daily basis? You've got to be up at like, I don't know, 4 a.m. You're doing this. Yeah, really? Yeah. Jeez, so yeah. you got to be, I don't know how you watch games at night when you got to be in bed early. you got That's kids. That's the problem. Because So I have teenage kids. They're pretty self-sufficient at this point. Mm -hmm. They don't need me tucking them in and doing all the things <laughs> they used to need. So I can watch a game, but yeah, I wake up at four. If the game is good, now I'm up at 10 and it's 10.30. If it's a playoff game, it didn't start till late 20. Now it's 11.30. I don't think I'll have to stay up for any playoff games this year as a Yankee fan, luckily, so I'll get my sleep. But um, I'm always willing to sacrifice an hour of sleep for a good game. It's always worth it in the end, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You talk about it in the off season and you would have made that choice 10 yeah, times out exactly. of 10. exactly. So because of your professional career, the news side, the hard news side, but also your personal side, the fandom of sports that you have. I think you're as good, as qualified a person to answer this question as any. Sports takes on a weird role sometimes in society. What do you think sports should do, should serve for people these days? Well, hopefully, first of all, it brings them joy. It's funny, I love watching the games. I'm not one for like this, all the sports debate shows mm -hmm. where it like suddenly sports becomes confrontational and angry. I know most of it's theater, but you know. I, I, so hopefully it is a unifying force. I think that all the time. When I go to a concert or a ball game and I look around and we're all standing and cheering and you're hugging a stranger and high-fiving the guy two rows back and somebody's buying you a beer. Yeah, yeah. It's the most communal possible experience where none of the other stuff that's out there in the world right now that feels divisive matters. So if you go to a Mets game, we're all here together. If you go to a Springsteen concert, we're all here together. And I think there aren't that many spaces anymore where you can just totally step out of whatever conflict or division is, is in the world. And it, it's, a, it's a ball game, it's a concert, and there may be a handful of other places, but I hopefully, 
it's a lot to ask of a game, but I think it still does it. I think it brings us together and nothing else matters when you walk through these gates. If you want to fabricate a debate, we can do something here right now, like a hot dog a sandwich or not. No, I will Ooh, skip that. I think it is. What's okay. your take on that? Uh, I don't think it is. But we, is it because the bread's on the it's side? It's vertical, yeah. It's yeah. like, a, I don't know. I need the bread on top. And the I need a hotter too. take on that. Now I agree with you. All right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it took See, you yeah, four yeah. seconds to be convinced. <laughs> it took you really on my yeah, side. Okay, it's not we would a never be on a no, morning show no, on a morning time. I have no hope. Yeah. <laughs> you, you played, too. You're not just a sports fan. You were a team captain, right? High school. Basketball, football. And yep. You still play at all, or is that part of your play a little basketball. My son's a good basketball player, so I get out there in the driveway and play with him some. So that's fun. But yeah, I played in Jersey. I played Ridgewood High School, um, played basketball and football. I played baseball till eighth grade. I loved baseball, but I got tall mm. and I started playing a lot of basketball and spring started to mean AAU basketball yep. season. So I lost baseball, which part of me regrets. Um, but yeah, I, I played and then when I got to college, I went to Vanderbilt, which is an SEC school. Repping them today. Yeah, yeah we are. Yep. Go Doors, Vandy Boys, and baseball. Um, and uh, I found the level of competition to be a little higher. When I thought about Slightly. playing football yeah. and the guys from Alabama got off the bus, and I was like, I think I'll go write for the paper. Yeah, I got the news, newspaper. Yeah, yeah, so I did. That's what I did. I became a sports writer for the school paper. So I realized that when I was eight years old and I was too short for <laughs> baseball, and right? I went right to you know doing the journalism part. Instead, Everyone so. has a moment. Exactly. You take the turn. Today. Yeah. Let's talk about the Olympics. Paris coming up before we know it. Yeah. What excites you most about these games? What should we be excited about? Well, I think in a lot of ways, it feels like a relaunch of the Olympics, you know, because you had the COVID Olympics with Tokyo delayed by a year. There was so much controversy around the, the Beijing games and the time zone is weird. And I feel like Paris is a place, it's so beautiful to begin with. I think they're going to do things you've never seen before. I think, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this, but the, let's just say the opening ceremony is gonna be not in a stadium, and it's gonna be unlike anything it has ever seen. I'll just leave it at that. All right, we're so, gonna kind of a scoop from Billy. Yeah, Bailey. so I think, um, and they'll probably make you erase this, but um, <laughs> the, it's, let's just say it's gonna be unlike anything anyone's ever seen. In terms of an opening ceremony, you're gonna have volleyball under the Eiffel Tower and equestrian at Versailles. So I mean, I, Paris on its own is so beautiful and special and it's going to be summertime and to me it feels like the Olympics really are back with Paris and I love the summer games too. Those are my favorites. Something special about yeah. them now. We'll yeah. work on getting me that internship and we'll be out there together. Let's and do it man. I hope they send me there. That's, yeah. that's their, yeah. <laughs> Let's focus on enjoying the Mets game first today and thank you for Thanks so much time. for having me. Enjoy this. Appreciate it. Willie Geist, thanks for watching.